tales of tomorrow. Presented by Maslin, Beauty Blend Drug. Tonight's tale of tomorrow, The Little Black Bag. Starring Vicki Cummings with Joseph Anthony. Say, how do you think you'd like to work in a place where they just closed up shop once a year so that everybody could go fishing? There is one place like that, the Maslin Carpet Mills. I'd like to read you just one paragraph from the shuttle. You know, we've read to you from editorials in it before that I think points out exactly how, well, at least one of the Maslins feels about the outdoors. He says, a friend is not alone for autumn's woods with gun and dog, nor summer's sun with rod and reel. Nor is a friend alone to challenge nature fastnesses with solitary canoe, nor just the two may boil their coffee over a fire that's built for one, and so on, it goes like that. And you know, right opposite this editorial, on the facing page here, they've got the golden rule, as stated in eight different religions, Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism, and so forth. Eight of them. Now, I don't think I need to dot any I's or cross any T's. Some of the Maslin family like to fish, and they know that lots of other people like to go fishing too. So once a year, on the opening day of the trout season, the great Maslin carpet mills close down so that everybody who wants to can just go fishing. And now C.H. Maslin and Sons bring you Act One of tonight's Tale of Tomorrow, The Little Black Bag. Livingston, I presume. Oh, Andrew. And how much money did the eminent physician and surgeon earn today? Andrew, don't. I know I haven't treated a patient in days. Oh, I'm tired. Tired. Oh, you poor little man. What do you know about being tired? I'm tired, too. Tired of wearing these shabby clothes, tired of living in cheap rooms and listening to your excuses. Tired. What from? You haven't earned a dollar in a month. Oh, Angie, stop it. Oh, no, not this time, my benevolent husband. I'm fed up with all this rot, moving from one hovel to another, living in filth, sinking lower and lower. I know that. You were going to set the world on fire, be the greatest surgeon that ever lived. Hopes, dreams. All right, that's enough. The reason for my failure was a mistake. It was an accident. That's over. Forget it. No one else knows. You're still a doctor. You're still supposed to earn a living. I've done everything possible. I can't manufacture patients. There are other ways of making money. Lots of other ways if you were only smart. I won't touch that kind of money. All right, all right. Stop. Stay in your cave. You're a weak, spineless failure. Not good for anything. Hey, oh, go on. You hey. disgust me. And I think of all the big plans you had. Well, you failed at everything you've ever attempted. Why I ever married you, I don't know. Where do you think you're going? I'll get you some money. Money? You? Ha! Huh. Dr. Fulbright, how are you this evening? Things getting better, I hope? <laughs> if things were better, I wouldn't be here. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought maybe you'd come to take something out, you know, your watch, perhaps. The man has nothing to do. He needn't keep track of time. How much? Your bag? No, but, but, Doc, your, your practice, your, your, your work. Oh, no, no, I couldn't take that. That's your life. How, how would you get on? Just tell me what it's worth. No, I couldn't. It's no use to me anymore. Look, Doc, for 25 years you've been in this neighborhood. All over people know you, the good you've done. Such things aren't forgotten. Well, that's all behind me. My practice is washed up. Look, Doc, I've known you a long time. There's, there's, well, there's something I feel I've got to say. 
Now, I, I hope you don't think I'm... Doc, it's your wife, that Angie. Now, you tell me how much I can get on that bag. Okay. Okay, but I hate doing it. So I can let you have $25? $25? $25? For 25 years. No profit in that. I'll take it. Wait a minute, Doc. I just thought of something. Look. Suppose I give you $20 for your bag and another medical kit to boot. One that's been lying around the shop. How would that be? No, it's no good. I, my nerves are all shot. Look, you can't just throw everything away. Let me get you this one. No, don't bother. I've made my decision. I'm not turning back. Now, now, just a second, Doc. It's right here. Here, here it is. Here. Look at this. I mean, it's a little out of date, but you never can tell when, when, when you need it. Lifting bag? Where did you get it? Well, that was the darndest thing. One rainy morning, oh, it was about five years ago, I came down to open the shop. There it was, right in front of the door. No name, no address, nobody near it. These instruments. I've never seen anything like that before. Neither have I. But I, uh, well, I figured the bag had good leather, so I kept it in the window for almost a year. You know, on the highest bid I ever had on it, a man looked inside, saw the instruments, and laughed in my face. That's no good to me, Doc. Five bucks and it's yours. What do you say? Look, there's no hitch, nothing to worry about. Anytime you want the money back, I'll give it to you. Well, what can I lose? Dust will probably accumulate on this, too. Thanks for your kindness. You're a good friend. Good night. So long, Doc. Good luck. A bank? I pawned my medical kit. You pawned? Well, that's just fine. Now what are we going to do? Go out and sell shoes to make a oh, living? Oh, Angie, don't start again. Well, I thought you said you pawned it. I did. Well, then what's this thing? I made a deal with the pawnbroker. Well, that's going to be a big help to us. I didn't have no money for doctors. Mrs. Gallucci, Maria is very sick. What is it, doctor? It can only be one thing, hemorrhagic encephalitis, an infection of the brain. Is that very bad, doctor? I'm afraid there's nothing anyone can do. You've got to do something. Maria mustn't die. I'm sorry. Sorry is no good. You put her in a hospital. They got medicines and things. They could do something. No, it's too late for that now, Mrs. Colucci. You move her now. She'll just go more quickly. No, doctor. You got to do something. You got medicines in a bag. You could give her to something. There's nothing to give her. You got her. Anything. Please, doctor. Please. All right. I'll do what I can. Uh, where's my bag? I'll give her a sedative. What These are pain. She'll go any moment, poor child. She's in a coma now. This is 
this confounded thing. For use by authorized personnel only. Used unethically, this equipment shall lose all curative power and the violator shall be subject to the full penalty of the law. I want medicines and I get a lecture. There must be something in here. What's this gibberish? Anti-infection, 4G, 3CC. I suppose that means I administer 3CCs of 4G. Whatever that is. Or G, 3 cc. It's already loaded. What a way to carry a syringe. It doesn't diminish. I squirt out half of it, and it it stays filled. What is this? Please, doctor, please. I don't know, Angie. This syringe, it, it's so peculiar. Oh, well, go ahead. What can you lose? You'll at least make Mrs. Colucci feel better, even if you can't help the girl. Hurry, Doctor. Hurry. She's got pain. You can take her home. And let her rest. She seems to be all right now. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You're upset about me. The doctor made you well again. Doctor, I ain't got no money. But I'm gonna light a candle for you. God bless you, doctor. Thank you, Miss Scrooge. I'll drop by tomorrow. Thank you. Angie, do you realize what just happened? That type of encephalitis is invariably fatal. It's never been cured before. How'd you get hold of the bag? Where'd you find it? I told you, at the pawn shop. I don't understand all this. A syringe that refills itself. That miraculous cure of the child just now. Can you imagine what I can do with this bag? Yes, I can. There's a million dollars in that satchel, and we're going to clean up. Angie, let me do things my way. This can be a magnificent thing. Oh, save it. I just saw me coat walk in front of me. I once made a mistake, a bad mistake. I'd like to rectify it now with this. Yes, I know you made a mistake, but the district attorney wouldn't call it Angie, that. you There's would... a million dollars in your hands, and I'm going to see that you keep it there for a long, long time. From now on, I'll make all the rules, and I'm going to take care of this. Put that down. Such strange-looking equipment. Oh, oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's some writing uh, on this. Where's the magnifying glass? Oh, here it is. Look, look, with instruments like these, you can have the whole medical world in the palm of your hand. Just look at that. U.S. patent applied for July 15th, the year 2450. Say, do you remember the fishing rod I showed you a while ago? Well, here's a little item that on a fishing trip would be just as valuable as the fishing rod itself. It's Maslin's Handy Andy, and handy is really the word for it. And let me show you exactly why. Just zip this open, and what have you got? 
Lots of little individual holes and a plastic backing to hang all your lures and spinners on. They never can get tangled up again. They're all right there for you to reach. The plastic backing is so that in case you fall, there's no chance of one of the hooks going through the material and hurting you. Here's a big snap pocket. I like to keep a Maslin raincoat in mine. A couple of sandwiches fit just as well. Zip this up out of the way. And back here, you've got more space, lots more. A great big full-width pocket lined with water repellent material for a large lure box or some other gear. And down on bottom here, a ring on which to hang your landing net. Of course, that's only the half of it because you can use both sides, one as easily as the other. Here we have a couple of lamb's wool patches for wet and dry flies, or the other way around if you like. Two more pockets for small gear, one snap, one zip, and another one of those great big ones that opens up to hold all kinds of gear, like this. And, of course, a lanyard on which you can attach a nipper or a very deluxe knife, sort of the way this one is. And there you have it, the Handy Andy, made by Maslin Sportswear. And what it is, actually, is a tackle box that you can wear. Now, it costs only $6.95. Now, here is a real gift for father or a gift for anybody else that you know that happens to like to fish. It comes in this very attractive and very handy plastic container. You can use it over and over again as many times as you want to, even to store those trout in the icebox with. Look for it at your Maslin dealer, the Handy Andy at $6.95. At your Maslin dealer, you'll probably see this display with a Handy Andy on one side, the Colorado River vest on the other. If you don't know the name of your Maslin dealer, just write us. Print your name and address on the back of a postcard and mail it to Maslin Sportswear, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Do it right away, and we'll let you know right away the name of your local Maslin dealer. And now, Maslin brings you the second act of The Little Black Bag, starring Vicki Cummings. All right, Maria, I have your measurements. When you've grown almost an inch in the last three months, keep it up. She's grown good now, Doctor. Ever since you gave her that health pill last year. Since then, no colds, no stomach aches, no pains. Yes, these certainly are marvelous little things. Anytime you need another, just let me know. I'm well stopped. Oh, you've been more than good to us already, Doctor. The things you did, Maria's sickness, my pneumonia, the health pills. I was glad to do it, Mrs. Colucci. And to think that you still see us now after two years and with such a success. All the rich people waiting outside. I'll always have time for you and Maria. You know, in a way, You've been responsible for all this. Come any time. Come, Maria. Dr. Fulbright has other patients to see. You're a good man, Doctor. I never forget. What's going on here? The waiting room is full of patients. Patients who can pay. Come, Maria. Sorry. Sorry to take up so much valuable time. Goodbye, Doctor. You didn't have to say that. Oh, what difference does it make? You haven't got time to waste on charity cases. Out there, that's where the money is. Angie, haven't we got enough now? The car, this office, our home in Connecticut. Can't we afford a little kindness? Think of the good we're doing. Think of the good we're doing. What if the instruments stop working? What if the bottles and the hypodermics run dry? What then? They never have. They keep refilling themselves. But they might. And the day they stop, we're right back where we started. I have no right to use these instruments for selfish purposes. You are a fool. This is the chance of a lifetime. You forget one thing. For use by authorized personnel only. Used unethically. Oh, stop with that scared talk. I've heard it a million times. It doesn't mean a thing. You may not think so, but we'd be fools to ignore it. Oh, that's a laugh. How could anybody from the 25th century reach us? How did they send that bag back through all the time? How do they keep refilling the bottles and hypodermics? Why are the instruments always sharp and sterile? We don't know how these things work. This is 1952. I tell you, we're perfectly safe. Nothing can touch us. How do you know nothing can touch us? Perhaps there's a machine, a time machine that can send things to us from the future. Perhaps somewhere in the 25th century, there's a machine or a man who controls this bag, keeps supplying it, knows all the uses to which it's put. One deviation or false move and it can be taken back. We don't know where these things come from. Oh, you're out of your mind. First chance we get to get some real money and you talk theories. I tell you, this is too important for just one person. It belongs to everybody. 
Just look at the magnificence of these scalpels. This one does its work without pain, without bleeding. This can find cancerous growth and eliminate it immediately. Angie, I tell you, this is a science far beyond anything we've ever known. We must walk a straight line. You have to drink. Oh, please be quiet. I'm trying to think. The 25th century. A medical kit from the 25th century. Be careful. That's the amputation scandal. Don't it's you think very I dangerous. know what it is? I know these instruments as well as you do. For two years, I've watched you work, and I can handle them as well as you can. Don't be a fool. Training for a nurse doesn't make you a surgeon. You wouldn't know the first thing about surgery. Wouldn't I? I've seen these instruments move themselves. I've seen them do it. Anybody could be a success with these. Send in the next patient. Let's get things cleared up fast here. I want to talk to you a moment later. Talk to me now. Later. Patients are waiting. Send in Mrs. Lagan. And don't forget to ask her for a big fee. She looks really wealthy. Mrs. Lagan, the doctor will see you now. Mrs. Lagan, how do you do? Dr. Fulbright, I've heard so much about you. Everyone raved so. I hope you'll be able to do something for me. Come right this way. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Well, you say that you are suffering from muscular paralysis. Uh, that's correct, Doctor. My arm has been paralyzed now for five years. All other doctors have given up hope of curing me. Well, let me see. The last physician said the muscles were dead. They'd never function again. I just thought perhaps... Yes, uh, give me the myotome, please. Yes, Doctor. Now, uh, just relax a moment. What's that? What are you going to, to do? Worry. You have nothing to worry about. No, it. no, you're going to cut me. I, I don't want you to. I, I won't let you. I, 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 wait, cutting right into me. I don't feel a thing. There's no pain. Sit still. You're going to be all right. The arm will heal instantaneously. Give me the ointment. I'm right here, Doctor Fulbright. It feels so strange, all sort of tingling, as if the dead nerves were coming to life. Well, I think that's enough. Now, move your fingers. Move my fingers? Oh, that, uh, that's impossible. Uh, they've been paralyzed for five years. Do as I say, move your fingers. I, I don't believe it. They're moving for the first time in five years. Now, you just exercise me today and come and see me tomorrow. The arm, the muscles have been completely restored. You will have no further trouble. Well, I, I, I don't know what to say. It, it's a miracle. Oh, those instruments, the, the things you've done, the world should know of this technique. It will. Shortly, I promise you. And I'll send you a bill tomorrow, Mrs. Lagan. Thank you. Yes, yes, of course. By all means, whatever you think is right. I, oh. Thank you, Doctor. You're a very great man. Goodbye, and thank you again. Goodbye, Mrs. Lagan. Goodbye. Send her a bill for $50. Are you out of your mind? That woman can pay anything we ask. What's the matter with you? Angie, can't you understand what I'm trying to do? Everyone who walks out of here thinks you're a miracle man. I say cash in on it. I stood by you through all the years when we didn't have a dime. Now I want some of the dividends. I'm afraid you're going to be very disappointed. What do you mean by that? I've thought a great deal about this bag during the past few months. And? Such a gift cannot be held by one person. It belongs to the entire profession. You can't be serious. Another young man anymore. I've got to make sure that if anything happens to me, all this will go to the proper authorities. You said enough. That's out. Never mention it again. Do you understand? Angie, you have no Otherwise, right... Otherwise, I'll go to the police and tell them how you killed a patient because you came in drunk before an operation, doctor. It's funny, but I'm not afraid anymore. After all these years, I'm not afraid. Oh, look. Arthur, 
Once, once we meant a great deal to each other. Once there wasn't anything in the world you wouldn't do for me. It's too late, Angie. I sent the letter this morning. By tomorrow, the entire world will know of the revolutionary medical power transported to us from the 21st century. Stupid, stupid fool. You're throwing away a gold mine. I won't let you. There's nothing you can do. I won't let you. Now play the great doctor. Now try and give it away. Angie, you, you shouldn't have done that. It, it was wrong. They'll, they'll know. You should have played it my way. This thing's too good. I'll change my name. They'll never find me. I'll get away with this and I'll make a fortune. The main thing is that I have the black bag. Nothing can stop me now. What? What's going on here? The instruments. Where are the instruments? Oh, no. No. It's, what is it? What's the full bag? Everything all right. Where are the instruments? Dr. Fulbright? No. Dr. Fulbright? No, this can't be happening. Dr. Fulbright? I won't let you. Dr. Fulbright? By authorized personnel only. Used unethically, this equipment shall lose all curative power, and the violator shall be subject to the full penalty of the law. So we end tonight's tale of tomorrow, The Little Black Bag, starring Vicki Cummings. Before I tell you about next week's play, do you remember this music? I'm sure you do. Beautiful old song called Loch Lomond. And when you hear it, you should think of home decorating because Loch Lomond's not just the name of a beautiful old song. It's also the name of one of the Maslin's newest developments. Take a look. Here it is. Nice, isn't it? This is the textured pile, which actually means that you get a textured tweed effect, and it's beautiful as well as long-wearing. Loch Lomond comes in two tones of one color, or if you prefer, two color effects, so that it will fit into almost any type of room or color scheme. It also comes in the contemporary leaf design, in self-tones of one color, or as here, in two contrasting colors. Same width, same price as textured Loch Lomond. Both types of Loch Lomond come in widths up to 12 feet. Now the price is the real surprise, only $7.95 a square yard. Real style and long-wearing quality for a modest cost. It's easy to remember, Loch Lomond, the new Maslin Beauty Blend Broadloom. Next week, be on hand when Tales of Tomorrow presents The Exile, starring Chester Morris, a strange story of an atomic experiment with weird results. Presented by Chrysler, the name that makes news in watch bands. Here is real fashion magic. The expansion watch band that transforms any woman's watch into a modern bracelet watch. It's Golden Fantasy by Chrysler. Think of it. A bracelet watch usually costs $50 or more. But Golden Fantasy gives you this same style for only $9.95, tax included. So go to your jeweler. Ask him to show you Golden Fantasy. See for yourself how Chrysler makes news in watch bands. The preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.